Welcome back to today's tutorial. We'll be going through Liana. Liana is known as the safety net for your coins and uses a simple Bitcoin wallet time lock script to allow for recovery paths. Now, what does this mean? Well, it means there are solutions for inheritance where you can delegate a recovery path to an heir that doesn't necessarily have the same keys that were used to create it. Or perhaps there is lesser keys needed than were originally used. We'll go through that. It's also got safer self-custody because what this allows you to do is if you lose a key, specify ahead of time a recovery path. And this recovery path won't be activated until a pre-specified threshold number of blocks lapses. And finally, because of the risks of multiple parties managing a wallet, especially the fleeting nature of businesses, this can set up a recovery path for businesses where if a person were to leave the organization, perhaps maliciously refuse to sign there are stipulations that you can put in place to protect yourselves ahead of time. Now, Liana's got different plans with service. Today, we'll be going through the free open source DIY option that we've downloaded from GitHub. Now, GitHub, here we went to the V1.1 Miami Sunset. And we have went ahead and downloaded the zip file here. So now we're going to switch over to the laptop where we'll be doing this. So what have we got here? We've got a Bitcoin testnet node running. We've got a hot wallet here with 7,100 sats and Liana running. Now I'm running this core on the laptop, this testnet's just this hot wallet in Sparrows, just a testnet wallet. And we'll go through it. So the first thing we're going to do, we, just, we already selected testnet on Liana. We're going to create a new wallet. Here, we'll specify Bitcoin testnet. That's the one we're using. And here is the primary path. So you can choose any number that works for you. In this case, we're going to set up one key on the laptop Call this one laptop. And then we're going to set up a second key with our Ledger Nano S. Now we've got the Ledger Nano S testnet. Bitcoin testnet app open. We're going to call this Ledger Mamo <laughs> Ledger Nano S. Okay, so under normal conditions, the script that will unlock it is both of these devices. Now let's say we lose our Ledger Nano S. This is where we'll want to specify what can spend after a certain allotted number of blocks. So we chose the laptop here only. And we could, in fact, make it the same, or we could make it either one in this case. We'll make it either one, right? But we don't, if we were to choose this here, this would allow us to go from both required to either or. However, in this case, in this, in this scenario demo, we've lost our Ledger Nano S, so we don't want that person to be able to, who may find it, to be able to unlock it. And then we're just going to specify. Now, I think this is the max 65,535 blocks, which I believe is something to the power of something. 
it was mentioned in the bit devs, but I've since forgotten. Now, in this case, we're just going to do this after one block. So, well, let's do two blocks. All right. So we've got laptop and Legend and OS. And then after 20 blocks, 20 minutes, two blocks, the laptop will be allowed to unlock it. Not the ledger. Not either. All right. Now make sure you copy and screenshot this mnemonic. We've backed it up, of course. And here is our descriptor. Also back that up, obviously. And then here, we will need to register this descriptor on the ledger. So we will choose the ledger. And we'll get a prompt on here to register the wallet. Liana. Wallet policy. And we'll approve. We'll have to go through the keys involved and approve. We'll have to go through this second key. Approve, that's ours. And then here is the recovery path key. And we're ready to go. Okay, now we can go and confirm that we've registered it. All right. So because we've already got the full node set up, here's the local host, the port, the cookie path for the RPC connection. Normally, if you were connecting RPC on a non-local host, you might use username and password. In this case, we're doing a cookie. This Sparrow instance is actually connected uh, via RPC as well, via the cookie file. All right, we're ready to finalize the installation and install this wallet. And it's done, that was quick. We have zero balance. Here we'll see the home screen, which shows the balance of the wallet. Sending screen looks very much like a normal Bitcoin wallet at this point. Our receiving address. Our UTXOs. Transaction history and PSBTs. Our settings, we've got Bitcoin Core. Our wallet. We can re-register on the hardware if we needed to. We can change the alias of our keys, the fingerprint names. We can issue a re initiate a recovery. We'll come to this. And then finally, the about version. No, I guess we're on 1.0, so we did not get the newest one. All right, now we're going to go to Sparrow. Well, actually, first we're going to go to Liana. We're going to get this address. Then we're going to go to Sparrow. We're going to pay to it. Liana, test. Send it all. One sat per byte seems good enough. Create transaction. Finalize. Sign. Broadcast. And let's see, it should show up in Liana in a moment. Perhaps you need to refresh the GUI. There it is. All right, so now we've got our transaction pending. Unconfirmed. We'll have to wait. So now we're going to do, once this gets one confirmation, we'll try to spend with just the laptop. And we'll see that it requires two signatures. And then we'll wait until that specified block period has elapsed. And then we'll just sign with the recovery path and send it back to Sparrow's hot wallet so that you can see the full suite of how this could be used. Now, of course, there's many other ways to implement this. This is a very basic one. I've got a key. I lost a key. The other key that I'm not going to lose allows me to sign. Perhaps it would be more prescient to use the one of two option as either or. 
But again, because I have lost this key, I don't want whomever may have found it to be able to move the funds on their own with just that device. Now, it is registered on the ledger too, so we aren't going to take that risk. And of course, it's testnet, so it won't matter, but I think it's enough to illustrate the point home. So we'll hang here and wait until we get a confirmation. All right, so we've got one confirmation now. And you can see about 20 minutes left before the first recovery path becomes available. You could actually set more than one recovery path too. You can set multiple. All right, so we're gonna go to send. We're gonna try to send it to ourself or rather let's go and actually try to send it to Sparrow. We're gonna send it back to Sparrow. We'll just say max. Okay. Unknown error. Can't create a transaction. All right, let's try that. There we go. We'll send 6,000 sats and a minor fee of 1,000. So as you can see, one spending path is available. Finalizing this transaction requires both. Here's the fingerprints. We can go to sign. Ledger turned itself off. Okay, so if we sign with the laptop, you can see we can't broadcast because we need another signature from the Ledger Nano S. Now, I'm not actually going to broadcast this, but let's see what that signing process would look like with the Ledger. So we've got spend from known wallet, wallet name Liana, approve. Processing. Now we've got to review these outputs. Sending 6,000 sats to Sparrow's hot wallet. And then we're going to confirm the fee of 1048. It's a lot. <laughs> now we're accepting and sending. And then we can resume... Now we can see back on Liana, we have the option to broadcast. So we're going to go into this PSBT where we've signed both and just simply delete. It's gone. And then we'll wait until the next block passes. And then we'll be able to sign simply with just the laptop and broadcast it back over to Sparrow. All right. And as you can see, we've got a third confirmation here in Sparrow. So we should refresh and this recovery path will be available. Fresh coins. And I'm not sure if this is exactly the best way to do it. I, when we did the demo at BitDevs, I used this refresh coins thing and I did this, I hit one. And it was saying two signatures required here, which I thought was strange because that is not what we specified. However, I did realize that once you go to settings, recovery, and then choose that recovery path, now we can just do it with a single signature. So we're going to paste this address there that we're going to uh, Sparrow. And now you can see we just need one signature from the laptop. Laptop signed and we are able to broadcast. Whereas before we needed, you know, two signatures. Uh, here it is. So just keep that in mind. If you go here and hit, you know, coin selection expired one pay zero point it's going to make you do both signatures if you go to settings 
then recovery, you can do that. One signature, destination address, one sat per byte because we're on testnet. And now we have multiple spending paths available. And this is the second one that we want. And then we're going to broadcast it. And it's broadcast and we should see it in Sparrow. And there it is. So we specified, we created a two of two multi-sig. And then we re specified a two block recovery path. And then from there, we spent the funds after two blocks with just a single signature instead where it was not once possible. And now you can see we should have zero balance here. So again, who's this for? When you specify these recovery paths, you have all kinds of bounds that you can reach. You can set a five of five that degrades to a four of five, to a three of five, to a two of five, and then specifies to a one that has nothing to do with any of those keys, just to highlight how complex or simple you could make it to contrast what we just did here. Thank you for watching this video. Make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you found it valuable. We are trying to stack that value after all. And hats off to the team at Liana. This is a free open source product that you can get from GitHub. It works. And I'm impressed. This is uh, another way, another tool in the tool belt to make sure that you ultimately don't lose your Bitcoin. We'll keep delivering content to make sure that doesn't happen. Thanks for watching.